sandwich bags and on the lunch bags. So every day, his Aww. kids go to school with a new piece of art, and he and he photos it before he sends them off the, the artwork. And so we've highlighted that on the Sharpie uncapped um, community site. So sharp, the, so the community site is not about us showing off pens. It's about us showing off what people do with Sharpies. Right, and I think that's where marketing really gets interesting when you really relate to the personal stories oh, yeah. and how people personally. I guess personalize the use of a product. So I'm sure whoever invented Sharpie thought, okay, this is a great thing to, and they had a particular thing in mind. And I find it really fascinating when you really look at how customers find these new things to do with a product that you envisioned one way. And yet here's, I mean, who would think that a dad would do art on lunch? I know. Well, I mean, it even extends further. So there are people in Los Angeles who they uh, detail out Lam Lamborghinis. They take white Lamborghinis and they take black Sharpie pens and they're be they do beautiful artwork on them and then they clear coat paint over the top of them. Oh my god! They do this with motorcycles. They do it with, with motorcycle helmets. They do. They, and it's fantastic work. There is a there's a man who does who turns styrofoam cups into works of art, and oh he actually has videos on YouTube showing him live building out these works of art. There are people that use Sharpies to repair furniture. There are people. There's a there's a couple of kids, and we have this on the blog, um, for their high school prom. They bought white outfits, she bought a white dress, he bought a white tux, and they detailed out those, those outfits with Sharpie pens, and they're gorgeous. They did all wow. this work, and they did it on their own. I mean, that's the types of things that we see. And so, our whole, the whole NCAP program is about celebrating, celebrating what they're doing, and you know, showing the, the, the broad, the, I, I call it the infinite number of creative uses for Sharpie pens. It's amazing, all the different things people can do. I mean, I could go on for a long time. <laughs> wow, I know. I'm that. like, okay, let's put down the camera. Let's go look at the website. Yeah, <laughs> look at these cool we'll pictures. Go, go to blog.sharpie.com. You'll see a okay. ton of it. In fact, we highlight another artist today who does uh, characters with Sharpie pens. He does it. Does it? I just put, I just tweeted about it. Wow. Um, there's some ma amazing work. You, if you follow Sharpie Susan, you'll get the feed all the time, or Sharpie Wit, um, and then because those two actually are, are two Twitterers um, from Sharpie, but they're also using uh, tools like they're using posters. So we have blogging posters, we have a Facebook fan page, we have a YouTube page with, with videos. And we're, what we're doing is we're trying to showcase, bring all this content together in one place. And the reason we did that was because when we started this program, there was lots and lots of Sharpie content out there. That right. wasn't a problem. Lots of fan sites, blogs, things like that. Never, That was never an issue. Right. But there wasn't really a place for people to go to see... A destination site. Yeah, a destination. And we were a little bit worried when we started this. Is It was so good going on without us let's not break it. You know, that was a concern. We have to make sure we don't break this. Right, thing. you don't want the uh, the parent company to come down and squish the creativity right. or think that like, you know, like somebody's really looking over and then now people are gonna adjust their behavior. You wanted to participate, but not squish, I think. Yeah, we, we wanted to participate, but we also wanted to showcase and celebrate. And that's what the Sharpie and Cap program is all about. Showcasing and celebrating their work because they do such amazing things. I mean, and I've listed off a few, but there are so many more. The man in Kentucky who decided to completely redesign his basement with Sharpie pens. <laughs> it's an amazing, wow. and th that's online too, it's amazing. A newspaper did a whole, whole story about that. So people come up with very interesting things, and there's mm. some very um, practical things people do to repair shoes and furniture. Sure, um, there are people I, I could use it on my shoes. Well, uh, yeah, and, and actually I do too, and it's so funny because when I worked in the federal government before I joined uh, Neil Rubbermaid and the Sharpie team, when, when they found out I was joining Neil Rubbermaid and we owned Sharpie, the first thing people, a lot of women said to me was, oh yeah, I use Sharpies to uh, repair my shoes. And, and I know people who have all the different colors of Sharpies because they have lots and lots of shoes they need to repair right. with different colors. So I always thought that was really interesting. That's really cool. So where do you think Rubbermaid's going to go in the future? We have about a minute and a half here. So I, I think the big upside for us is, and, and we've talked about this, you and I have, is customer service. I think proactive customer service may be as powerful as anything marketing can do. Because we know if we turn one negative experience into a positive experience, that is a huge upside. Yep. It's wonderful to keep happy people happy. <laughs> but it's incredible when you turn somebody around. Right. And one of our brands that does that, probably the best right now, is Rubbermaid. They've been doing it with all kinds of different products, where they've done outreach when they found consumers that are upset about something, and, it, and they've turned them into advocates, and that, that's a good thing. Well, the statistics show, let's say someone's loyal, then people are about 60% loyal, but let's say they have a problem and you fix it, it goes up to about 80 to 85%. So if you're looking at you know measurement, customer lifetime value, from outreach from customer service, I mean, just that in and of itself. And then they become advocates, and then they become influencers. 
And I think that's really what you're looking for. So there's two kinds of tweets I see is generally, you know, your product sucks and you don't care about me. And then, oh my gosh, I can't believe how amazing this company is and what they're willing to do to help me and support me. And I think the one line you said in there was the care. I think it's very important to show that we care about our customers. Um, it's so important that I, I, I say it many times, say it, when, we, when you can show you care, no matter what you're doing in marketing, social media, or customer service, it's going to be a huge victory for us. And all the other pieces start coming in, they start working and integrating around that. But So I think that's one of the most important things we can do. I think so too. I think what I'm seeing is social media has made us all better people. You know, what I'm saying is like, it's not that we weren't caring individuals in the beginning, but I think when you're inside of a large corporation, we tend to get siloed and we tend to to forget about the people we're really interacting with or just like us, human beings who have feelings. And when I read, you know, things like I was tweeting for a long time and people were saying, you know, nobody was responding and then someone wrote back and said, you've changed my life. And I went, holy freaking moly. I know. I guess I should keep tweeting. We get insulated. But now that we're getting out there, and actually a lot of our marketers are now getting out there more. They're meeting with consumers and customers directly. It's really important. It really makes you a better company and a better brand. Thank you. I really appreciate this time together. It's so great to meet you in person. Yeah, it's so great to be with you, too. <laughs> Thank you.